beast, didn't they? Chuffed to bits. The smallest little thorn back there. I'm just concentrate on not leaving the rod over the side. And his eyes. He's got amazing eyes. Doggy in the boot. Called him mullet. There's a bit of weight to that, you know. And that's what we want, don't we? We don't want the same same all the time. We want something different, a good old show. Hello and welcome to the channel. Fishing wagon, rod bag, rucksack. I'm off down to the beach and I'm fishing. Time to go. Been looking forward to this for some time now. Um, weather the last couple of weeks, been absolutely shocking. Where am I? I'm at Park Shore. Park Shore, New Forest, Bewley Estate. And let's have a quick look around. Definitely just checking I've locked the van up. <laughs> Park Shore, Bewley, New Forest, and afternoons fishing. Work the weekend, bank the hours, got some hours in the bank so that I could pick and choose a weathering, a window in the weather so I can go fishing. Got all my rain clothes on, I've got my shelter. Still going to be drizzly this afternoon, I think. Um, and there's a storm front coming in. So this weekend is predicted gale force winds. So I thought, get it in. Get it in. Go fishing. Um, and here I am. So, a bit of a trudge down the footpath. Watching out for the dog mines. Um, and I'll get back to you in a bit. Look at that. That little island bit over there, I've heard tales of taupe around that part. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. Look at the sun in the distance. Absolutely stunning. Get your finger in the right place, Mark. Look at all that sunlight beaming down. Stunning. I'm going to rig up. I want to get a line in the water. <laughs> it's three hours until I die. Still going to put one in. Going to put the shelter up just in case it rains. If you look in that direction, you can see why. And I'm still setting up the gear. So I've put both rods out, right hand rod, pulley rig, single 4 hook snood and a frozen hardback crab, a greenish one, elastic on, hook proud, and he's out to the right. Far out as I, I proper thumped it out as far as I could. Tides on the uh, flood, so it's quite shallow out there. I'd be surprised if I walked out there, it'd probably only come up to my waist. It's too cold for that. Left hand rod, edging my bets a little bit. The hook trace on that one is a panel rig with a 3-0-1-0 panel. And I've lasticed up a nice chunk of bluey, but a fairly small piece of bluey, just as a, just as a tester. Um, sunshine looks amazing. I'm having to squint, sun's in my eyes already, but the shout is up and there's forecast rain. There is a storm front coming in, but it's not due until tomorrow. And then we're in for gale force winds. So this is my opportunity, my little window of opportunity in a two week period to be able to fish and film. I have been fishing, but I haven't been filming. Drags are set light because this is hound territory, albeit it's during the day. There's a chance of thornback ray, spotted ray, bass and doggies. But I'd like to winkle out a, a, a smooth hound if I could today. I think that if there's a chance of that, it will come nearer to the top of the tide. Drags are set light, just in case. I'm having a little experiment with rigs, and you like, you know I like to experiment and, and mix things up and change things about. So this, I've got both rigs are exactly the same as this one out there at the moment. So it's a very simple Trident pulley rig. It's the Aero pulley with a Gemini power swivel. A hundred pound Sukuma rig body to a thermolink at one end and another power swivel at the other. And obviously that's free running. I've put no beads on it, absolutely nothing else. I'm using five ounce breakaway leads. So I'm not using the roto bait. 
I'm not holding it captive. I'm relying on the impact shielding and the lift and release for the hook on the actual weight. And that can, it's probably three and a half foot. I think I cut the line to four foot and then when I've done the knots, that's where it's come out at about just over three and a half foot. So that is the pulley rig, very simple, not very complicated. And then I've got a choice and I've color coded them. I've either got blue termalinks on a single size 4-0 hook or yellow termalinks on a panel rig setup with slightly smaller hooks. This is for soft baits, this is for whole hardback crab. And I've made a few up, I think I've made five sets in total. Don't expect to lose any tackle here today, it's clean ground, but you never know. So this is one of the blue termalink ones that I colour coded for my own benefit and it is a single, I think that's a Camasan 4 wide, wide mouth hook. So when it's through the crab, there's plenty of hooks still showing. And the beauty of this setup really is you can clip on, you can bait up, and then when it's clipped up for casting, these things never go well when you're trying to demonstrate them. That's it clipped up for casting, onto your whatever way you connect to your main line and then when it hits the water it'll eject the hook and then there's a nice flowing trace that will pick up rays, hounds, bass, doggies. Just keep an eye on my rod tips. <laughs> Can't keep, there's no point fishing if you're not fishing. Does that make sense? No point being here if you're not concentrating. Um, so I'm going to unclip that, I've already got a rig body on, on each of the rods. What I think I'm going to do is bait both of these up, as spare baits ready to go. Whole hard back crabbed on the 4-0. Put this weight back in its little pack, uh, the weight back in its pack. This rig body, unless I lose a rig, and I'm not expecting to lose a rig here, he says, famous last words, you know what happens when you say that. Um, we always go three wraps, creature of habit. So that's how I do the rig bodies. And I just put them in a clear bag, just to stop them all getting tangled up with each other. And just, it's easy to see. You know, I can see exactly what that is inside there. I can see exactly what's inside there. And in this one A5 pouch, online retailer, the pennies, I've got all of the, on one side, all of the yellows on the other, he says pulling out an empty bag. All of the yellows on the other, and the main bodies I've just stuffed down the middle. I've got five, well, three rig bodies, two already out. All the spare hook snoods, colour coded in one bag. No big wallets, no big boxes of terminal tackle, pretty much nothing. And then in this one, just to keep it separate, I have the bigger versions. So depending on if anything happens, I've got ready-made, complete, non-interchangeable pulley rigs, but with bigger hooks, six O's. In case there's the signs of something bigger out there and I want to put on bigger baits. That's it. I keep all my weights in that little natty little box bag thing. It's got a hard bottom. You can see the weights inside. Because grip leads are a nightmare, aren't they? You know, grip leads are a nightmare, they get everything, they hook everything, um, and that's it. That's my kit. The rods at the moment, I'm using my Century Fire Blades, and I wanted simplicity for this fishing. So if you're in, hooking into a hound, hooking into a decent ray, I just wanted bomb-proof simplicity. So I've taken the specimen line, the 90 pound braid, off of my Daiwa BGs. When I bring the rods in next, I'll give you a show, but I'm using my Daiwa BG 8000s, really robust, 40 pound drag, beefy, beefy reels, probably too beefy for what I'm doing, to be honest. And I've matched that up with some butch <laughs> mono mainline. So I'm going 20 pound ASO, 20 to 60 pound 
shock leader, five ounce weights. So five ounce, 10 pound per ounce, plus 10 pound safety margin, 60 pound. It's all balanced out. All unproven, today's an experiment. I need to catch a fish. I'm willing those rock tips. You need to send me some vibes. Get these rock tips jangling. Get the real screaming more like. That's what I want. That's what I'd like today. This is one of the colour coded uh, yellow Termalink. So it's got the 3 0 hook and the 1 0 for the panel. And I've just got a really mangy, and it is mangy, old section of bluey. And it's still part of frozen. If it wasn't frozen, I don't think I'd be able to handle it. It would be that soft and it's going to be absolutely honking by the time it's defrosted. But it can go out frozen. I've caught bass on frozen fish before now. On frozen bluey actually. Um, and it had only just touched the water when the bass took it. So it took a frozen piece of fish. So I'm just whipping on the lower 3 hook. Concentrating on the eye. I said it a million times before, I know. Oh, I can hear thunder. Fishing with rods out in the thunder, possibly lightning, is not a good idea. And I've just got to do the, uh, the panel hook. It's only a small hook, really. Um, one, two, three. And just hook that through. And if I'm pulling faces, it's because I'm concentrating. Slippery little sucker. And there we go. More just for bait presentation. So that is ready to go on as my fish bait. I'll hang that on the tripod. The next rig that I've got, and this is the one that's going on the other rod, this is the one that's more hound specific, is a 4.0 Camasan wide mouth hook, three and a half, three foot ish long trace. I've color coded it with a different Termalink. And we will get a, I prefer the green crabs. And when I say green, when you look at this one, look, he's sort of dark, this crab. And he's a lot more dense, this crab. Very frozen, so I've got to be careful as I push the hook through, because it's not going to want to go through, and then all of a sudden it will just shoot through. I've learnt my trick there with the frozen crab. And all I've done is I've teased it all the way through. See the hook showing at the back? Try and make sure you can see that nice and clear. And he's straightening his little claws out, his little paws, his claws on his paws. Straighten them all out down one side, like that. And you get your elastic. Bear in mind, this isn't expensive peeler crab. This is hardback crab. You can go down the shoreline, down the side of a harbour wall, little bit of old knackered old bait, really stinky old bait in a washing, those little bags that you put in the washing machine. Make sure Mrs. has finished with them first. And just whip it all on. And then what you end up with is that. There's a crab, frozen hardback, with a hook stuck out the back. A little piece of elastic, look, we'll get rid of that just for cosmetic reasons. And there we have it. That's going on the other one. I've come for some respite up off the beach. And you're like, what are you talking about, Mark, you idiot? And it's like, yeah, what am I talking about? They're flies. Everything is absolute. The sun's come out, the beach has warmed up, and it has gone absolutely crackers. It must be all out season on flies, look at them. You spend 10 minutes sitting on the beach and you're literally covered in them. Um, today is not a fun day. <laughs> As soon as the sun comes out, you're like, oh yeah, glorious sunshine. And the beach is alive with these little black flies. And they're getting everywhere. And making me itch just thinking about it. Um, if you come up off the beach, up onto the grass, and they go away. Just checking I'm not covered in them. <laughs> it's... I know, I've, I've fished literally a few hundred yards off of this beach and I'll catch hounds and rays. Spotted rays guaranteed, hounds possibly, definitely dogfish, 30 plus dogfish if I did a session in a boat, but casting distance from the shore. 
Shows the difference, doesn't it? Depth of water means everything at this mark. But I know the hounds are here. I know they're here. I know they come here. I've caught them here. Just not during the daylight in the Solent. Daytime fishing in the Solent is grim. But the tides are all skew with. Tides are rubbish at the moment. There's no nighttime highs. This isn't a low water mark, it's too shallow. Um, scratch my head a little bit. What to do, what to do? I'm gonna stick it out, I'm here now. I've got bait out of the freezer, rods are set. It's glorious, it's not raining. But yeah, difficult. Hello and welcome back to day two. Same venue, same kit, same rigs. Slight difference in bait and definitely a change in weather. So day one, yes, a uh, few days ago, see the storm front coming in, managed to get packed up, absolutely honked it down with rain. It's glad I packed up when I did actually. It, it just didn't seem to be fishing. Um, and it may still be a little bit early. But I'm gonna target this venue all the way through this year. So this might be it for a couple of weeks now. Just wait for the turn. Gonna get the May rot soon with the weed. But yeah, I'm here again, day two. Same kit, same stuff. I've got live, fresh hardback crabs, and I've also got some ragworm. So I've put one rod out now. It's early part of the tide. Water looks filthy brown, dirty. Um, dirty water. <laughs> looks bassy. Bit windy, bit choppy. Big ball of ragworm on a, on a four row hook and pumped it out. A lot of tide running as well at the moment. So I'm having to cast diagonally into the wind against the tide and letting the grip lead settle somewhere in front of me. Plenty of people fishing, so there's another two setups, two lots of anglers times two further along, further groin, so there's five of us here tonight. I don't know the other guys. I've had a chat with a couple of them. Um, but yeah, see how it goes. Maybe a bit more luck, maybe not a blank. Who knows? <laughs> I'm gonna rig the other rod, but it's not going out yet. Bit early in the tide yet. But if someone else gets smashed up first, then obviously that rod will be rigged and ready to go. So, less jibber jabbering, more fishing. I'll be back in a bit. Definitely something there. Mm. I can't remember what rig I've got on this. I think it might only be the small little three hook flapper. Another doggy. <laughs> Another doggy. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. Doggy number two. Wait to it. I don't know if I've got a clump of weed with this. This is only a three hook flapper swimming straight towards me, whatever it is. Was it a doggy? 
<laughs> Another doggy. <laughs> We don't want doggies, we want hounds. Um, Not seen much else come out from the beach. And I've had three doggies. Don't want three doggies. I'd rather have a little hound. <laughs> it's a beautiful evening. Just coming up to high water now. So high water, it drops a little, then it comes back in, then it starts to fall. That's the, the abnormally, not easy to say, abnormally for Southampton water. Um, yeah, see what darkness brings. Hopefully, I'm all prepped, ready to go. Head torch at alert five. May not look that dark on camera because I've lightened the camera up, but it is properly getting dark now. Um, yeah, see if darkness brings any more joy because I'm struggling, proper struggling at the moment. That looks a bit more interesting. The stripping light. <laughs> Oh, this is a hound. And it's on the lightest rig I got. I think this is on the three hook flapper. <laughs> yeah. Can't really afford to give him too much bully on this one. Oh, he's proper going for it. In fact, I just see, in fact I can see him out in the distance on the surface. Yeah, it's playing all the way to the right and I can't afford for it to go to the right. He's giving me a right old go. I can feel the line twinging down the side of him. Ooh. I can't afford for him to go to the right because there's a groin right there. Oh, I can see him now. Oh, he's rolling up the line. Decent size. Um, yeah, so it's because I film everything. I oh, said, no. uh, um, a starry smooth hound, and I'd give that probably six, seven, wouldn't you? That's, it's it's quite a heavy one actually. Yeah. Oh, and, and that's my phone going off as well. So I'm going to concentrate this clip. With you. <laughs> it's all going crazy. It always does though when it, when you're doing this kind of fishing, doesn't it? Yeah. Sorry, getting distracted. Starry smooth hound. Absolutely stunning. I love them. Let me get this little crit back without getting my feet too wet. That's right, it'll go. Oh, well, okay, it's gone. You can see it's been going. <laughs> Hopefully, catch another one. <laughs> Just catching the last of the light, baited and rechucked out. Just had that starry smooth hound on a three hook flapper. <laughs> and it had wrapped itself up, so you can imagine the mess it made. It went back nice, I did, I did get a release out of it, and it did swim off strong. Um, but yeah, completely wrapped itself up the line. What a nightmare. I wasn't expecting to catch that on that. Um, I'm going to swap back to my pulley rigs and live crab now. Make the most of the crab that I've got. Um, yeah, and keep a close eye on my rods. Fishing with two rods might be pushing my luck as well because when that one drag set light, can't stress it enough. When that took off, that really did take off. Um, hope got it on camera, never can tell. Press the record button, hit and hope. <laughs> See if I can get another one.
baby starry smooth hound. Perfection in miniature. Look at that. He is stunning. You get him back in. <laughs> I love him. This one went well actually. He's tiny, but he, he give he give a good account of himself. I'll get him back in. I'm getting a lot of weed now. Everything's getting blanketed in weed. Uh, tide's turned, it's on its way out, it's on the ebb and um, and with it the weed so I think I'm going to call it quits that's one rod in, or one rod I'm packing away um, I'm going to pack this one, yeah look the baits are completely covered in weed I'm not going to catch anything like that um, yeah, I'm going to start packing up I'm going to have a slow pack up, leave one rod fishing you never know. Um, but otherwise, unless something happens, this is me signing off. Take care, tight lines, happy fishing. Hope to spend some time with you again sometime soon. From me, from here, for now, <laughs> it's goodbye. And I'll see you soon. <laughs>